Hey guys, this is Mr. Holsey. I'm going to teach you advanced modeling tools. This is lesson 4.4 in the Project Lead the Way IED curriculum at Lake Travis. We're going to make this a disposable coffee cup today, and by doing that, I will demonstrate all these advanced tools here. Um, I want you to definitely get the hang of this, these first 11, and then the rest are kind of extra. Uh, this isn't the best model to use to teach you all these tools, but it'll work and I think it might be a little fun because I don't have dimensions on here. I'm just showing you how to use them. So uh, I want your project to kind of look like this using this name, but of course your initials, your initials at the end of both the fo folder and the project file. You want to create a new part. We're just going to do this all in one part even though it looks like several. Save. First thing, you always want to save when you first get in here. It'll save as uh, I want it to be coffee, blah, 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 coffee cup, your first, middle, last, initial. Uh, it already exists, in your own place is sure. Mine already exists, but yours should not say that. So let's start by sketching a little circle on the bottom. Let's do a coffee cup. And this, I like I said, I just kind of want to estimate because a lot of times in design, you will be doing some estimation. So let's do that two inches. You can do that however big you want. And then let's extrude that just a little bit. I'm going to do mine only 0.2 inches or so. That's the very base of my cup. And if you look over here, that's the very base of my cup like that. That is an extrude. Uh, we use extrude a lot, and that's basically what you'll use the most. Extrude is really nice and easy. Next, I want to show you a loft tool. Loft creates a transitional shape between two or more sketches. You can do three, you can do five different sketches, but you need at least two. Um, so for this, uh, to make the coffee cup, it's gonna go out a little bit. By the way, you can use extrude with taper for that as well, but I'm gonna teach you how to use loft. Uh, so to create that other sketch that's way above my the top of this part, I wanna do an offset from plane work plane. I can make that like maybe four inches tall. And then I can create a new sketch up here. And how big was that Two. Maybe I want this to be like two and a half. Let's see what that looks like. And then I can loft from, uh, it wants me to add sections or faces. So I want to add uh, this face to this face here. And that looks okay. It looks a little bit skinny. So maybe I can go back into the nice sketch and just change the dimension for that, maybe three inches out. That looks a little bit more like a coffee cup. I like to get rid of the visibility of my work planes when I make them. So let me just uh, get rid of that. Next on the bottom, I want you to create a hole. Now the hole tool, again, is not the best to use for this case. You could just do an extrude since it's so simple. But I want to teach you how to use the, the, uh, the hole tool because in the future you're going to be doing some more complicated holes, especially screw holes that this is a really handy tool for. So a hole needs a point. I'm inside the sketch environment. I put a point where I want it. Or I want the center of my hole, then I use the hole tool, and look, it already suggests, because that's the only point available for me, um, where the center is going to be. So I can specify the diameter of the hole, since my, the, the diameter of my coffee cup was two, I can make this like 2.8 or something. Oh, excuse me, not 2.8, 1.8 or so. Fortunately, it gives me a preview. And then that was only 0.2, so I might want that to be 0.1. By the way, it's drilling, it, the drill point is at an angle here, so I've got this cone conical shape feature. I want this to just be flat for the coffee cup. That looks a lot better, I can tell by the shading. Okay, um, next I wanna hollow out the um, coffee cup. How would I do that? I could extrude and I could extrude with taper. I could use loft, but it's a really nice tool right here called shell. This will shell any complicated geometry. Look, it's even um, highlighting and suggesting that that's gonna be the inside of the tool. And look, anytime you see a red cursor on one of these tool menus, it means that is a feature that it's asking for. So it's asking for me to select a face to remove. So I wanna remove the very top and then the thickness can be 0.1, that's fine. And of course, like I said, you can uh, do yours differently if you want. So let's look at the list I've got. I did a loft, I did a hole, I did a shell. Now I wanna do a fillet. And a chamfer as well. Fillet and chamfer are very similar. It's taking an edge, it could be a straight edge like this or a curved edge, and making it round. Uh, then chamfer is taking that straight edge and, and cutting it off and making it angled. So they're very similar, fillet and chamfer, but you should really know the difference. So I want to do a fillet at the top lip. Um, that's where my coffee cup will kind of, or my lid will kind of sit. And that's where my mouth will go if I choose to take the lid off. So what you need to do is select an edge. I'm going to select this edge. Sometimes your uh, your preview will not show up. That's because your radius is probably too big for what you're trying to do. Um, so in my case, one is eek, way too big, about 0.1. That should work. Um, it's not. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think it'll. I think it'll be fine. Next, I want to do a chamfer at the bottom to kind of reduce the amount of 
uh, material that I'm using and also make it look, make it appear a bit stronger. So that chamfer, um, I could specify the angle and the distance, but then I don't have to specify the face. I can do that. You could do that too. So do the edge here and then um, let's see, is this too much or not very much at all? Oh, that ended up being too much. So if I change that back down to 0.1, that's so-so, but I think I'd like something more like 0.8. So that looks pretty fine. Uh, just want something almost imperceptible at the bottom there. Let's see what I'm trying to do next. Uh, chamfer at the bottom, I did that. Oh, let's do threads around the bottom. Now this isn't uh, the best usage of the thread tool, but it'll get the job done. It'll show you, it'll demonstrate. The threads You know, will look like that. That's uh, when you want to make a screw or a, a bolt or um, something like that. Or if you want to create threads that something is going to attach to. So you select the face that it's going to thread and you can change it from full length to uh, a certain offset going on there so it doesn't thread the entire shaft. And then the specification here, we want to be in ANSI and then we want, this is uh, the thread count here. So let's zoom in kind of and make sure that the thread count makes sense to us. That kind of looks fine. Make sure you're staying in right-handed because we're in the US. So I got my threads there. It looks all right. Um, next, I want to offset and revolve for the lid. So revolve tool is my favorite. Uh, I'll skip offset for now and just teach you about revolve. Revolve is my favorite because you can make some really, really complicated parts pretty easily. As long as it has a central uh, an axis, central axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry. So imagine this chess piece, this whole complicated shape centers around this axis right here, the edge of this box. And imagine that part swinging around it and, and carving out some solid material. Same thing here, as long as this is a loop, closed loop here, it would swing around and leave the inside of this wine glass hollow. So in order to do this, you need to sketch half the cross section. In other words, called the quarter section. So let's go sketch a quarter section of our lid here. In order to do that, I need to create a sketch on one of these planes. Let's do it on this plane. And this is a good time to show you F7 when you're inside a sketch is uh, slice graphics. You can also right click, I think it's right here, F7 slice graphics. That will cut away what you're not using for your sketch. So I cut away half of my um, half of my coffee cup so I can really see what's going on. Then the axis of symmetry for this guy is going to be right in the center and it should be straight. So uh, I will just kind of demonstrate, I'll make some random bubbly boo there and kind of demonstrate what's going on uh, with the revolve tool. So if I have some weird shape and then click revolve, it needs a profile and an axis. It selected this closed loop geometry because it was the only profile available. And then the axis, I want it to be right in the center and look, it revolved the entire thing around. So pretty cool. And, and if I wanted to, I could do only a certain degree, but for this, I would, of course want to do the whole thing. So now let's go back inside this sketch. Let's go back inside the sketch and kind of clean this mess up. That was just for demonstration purposes. Now what I really want to do is um, I want to use an offset tool. And uh, had the offset tool takes a complicated shape, uh, a loop or a, um, a series of lines, and it will offset that series of lines. So pretty nice, a little bit okay here, but um, really it's just a demonstration. So uh, let's see how this will turn out. I think it'll be a bit ugly, but well, let's do that. And let's go back to our revolve again using this axis. And I think it's going to end up with a little nub at the, at the top here. So you can go back. Even after the revolution is created, you can go back and um, keep, messing, <coughs> keep messing with this sketch. And as long as you don't royally mess it up, let me make that um, green there. As long as you don't really, really mess it up, it will keep editing your uh, revolve there. So give me a second. I do want to mess uh, change this a little bit because it looks quite ugly. And... That's good enough for me for now. So make something, some kind of lid that is satisfying enough to you. Uh, so we use revolve and offset. Next, circular pattern, rectangular pattern, and mirror are all pattern tools that you can use for both 3D features and for 2D sketches. I like them better with 3D features. You can see right here in this tool tip, the circular pattern uses this extrude cut all the way around a central axis again. Uh, the rectangular pattern, it combines things and shoots them in a certain direction. This one's a little more complicated, but um, 
in the circular pattern, it's pretty simple as long as you've got a central axis. So I want to make something pretty simple for mine. You can do something more like this example, this I heart IED emboss. That's an emboss using some text on a sketch. You could also use decal using an image for a sketch and set and then circular pattern that. I don't care what you do, but circular pattern something. But if I wanted to do a regular extrusion, I want to create another offset plane from the central plane here and pull it out because I don't really know the size of my coffee cup. And you can see where it's intersecting with the coffee cup. I want to pull it out enough so it's not intersecting wherever I want to go, wherever I want to do my sketch. So I can sketch on this plane, and I want to do just a little circle, maybe a little polka dot. This is a good time for me to tell you about the extrude tool and going backwards. You can see if it goes backwards into a, into a um, curved edge, it will kind of continue through it and leave an ugly nub on the inside of my cup. Instead, I can say to next, and look how it cuts off everywhere it meets the cup. It's a, it's a variable distance, a variable extents of this extrude tool. Pretty nice. So let me do that. And again, I like to remove my uh, work planes while I'm working. So then, pretty easy with the, ex with the circular pattern, just select this feature and select the axis going through the center of my coffee cup. Let me move it off for, over so you can see. This axis here, and I'll go around. What you can do it then is specify how many you want. You can do nine or even 90. It might yell at you because, whoa, that's too much. I bet you don't really want 90. So I would just want to do nine, and I can specify how far I want it to go around in case I only want to do nine within a 90 degree radius. But I do want to go all the way around with 360, hit OK. Now I've got something pretty decent here. What's next? Um, <clears throat> rectangular pattern to stack them. So rectangular pattern is here. And again, you can do this with the features or with the sketches, but um, I want to do the features. And actually, it, it's making me select every single little feature, but I want to do the entire thing. So I can sit here and pull it like this, pattern solids. Now you can see oh, the whole coffee cup with all of its features is highlighted in purple. That's what a solid does. And I can choose the directions, two, two directions if I wanted. I could just do only one, but I do want to do two in this case. So the direction will go along this axis, Think, and you can see this little green arrow pointing up, suggesting, hey, I think you want to go this way. You could change the direction, go down if you wanted to, with that button there. I think that's called change direction, or flip, yeah, flip. So I can go up, and uh, this is how many I can create. Let's do three or even 30 if you wanted to. Um, but the most important thing is this uh, distance here. Let's make sure that that's a good, oh, not 50 inches, but maybe not five either, maybe 4.5, I think will be enough to make sure to look like they're stacking, make them look like they're stacking. Okay, so I've got a stack going, but like I said, I want in both directions. So for this direction, I can choose maybe the axis and it's going that way, not far enough though. Let's make it more like not 30, but not three either. Um, maybe again, four and a half. And let's try that. And that's decent. And of course, if you wanted to go modify this, you could double click the rectangular tool. Um, so let me do something like four stacks. Okay, <clears throat> so I've got a decent stack worth. And um, then let's see. After that, I think I want to create my mouth hole. In order to do that, I'm just gonna do regular extrude, but demonstrate the mirror tool. Uh, so if I wanted to, I could do an extrude on every single one of these. Don't do that, that would be silly. Uh, what I can do instead is suppress this feature. It doesn't go away entirely. I can always bring it back, but it makes it go away for a little bit. Um, so I can demonstrate what's going on here. So I want to create a sketch, but oh no, my uh, the surface, the top surface of my lid is not perfectly straight. So that's annoying. I could either, uh, let's see, that was a revolve, right? I could go back inside here and make it straight, make that top surface straight um, by saying I want it to be horizontal. Or I could uh, create an offset plane like I did with my other thing. But I, I want to try this to kind of show you how it goes. So over here, I can create a mouth hole by doing something sort of like this. And this time, I do want you to pretty much mimic me. Let's try this guy. And then, oops, let's escape out of that. Let's do an arc going down from here, maybe here or so. And yeah, see how that tangent constraint icon pops up? That's going to be tangent. Uh, tangential to my line there, then green dot, and uh, looks like that's where I want it. And then I 
Actually, for this mirror, I want a line there. Oh no, it looks like it didn't quite go on the center there. But there, that's better. But I want this line to be a construction line. Construction lines are nice because they're not gonna mess up your closed geometries, but you can still use them for something like a mirror. So on the mirror, I wanna select all the lines that I wanna mirror, and sometimes it doesn't quite work. I think the key is to select your points as well, your connection points. So all my connection points, as long as I get those, I think it'll work. I selected what I want to mirror, and this is the mirror line, this um, construction line there. Let's apply. I think it worked, um, but we just got to try. We just got to try it uh, with an extrusion. Uh, it's kind of hard to select it exactly. There we go, and let's go back down. And I can say to next again, so it keeps going until it hits the either the lid or the edge uh, of the coffee cup, but it's not actually going to cut into it. Okay, and that. Looks like a pretty decent mouth hole. I used the, uh, the the mirror tool to kind of demonstrate. Let's turn back on my rectangular pattern here. Let's unsuppress it. But oh no, my mouth hole didn't show up on all those other coffee cups. That's kind of annoying. What I can do then is change is change the uh, timeline here. I can move the extrusion up before the rectangular pattern, and now my rectangular pattern is also uh, rectangular patterning this extrusion for the mouth hole there. Okay, uh, the last thing I want you to do is kind of mess around with the with the um, appearances that's up here in the quick access toolbar. Let's make it denim. I don't know. You can if you want to. Just kind of mess around with these, see what options there are. There are some pretty fun ones. Uh, cream might be kind of cool. I don't know. But then if you wanted to change like the coffee cup, you can control select and select a lot of different faces and then change only the appearance of that guy. Okay, and you can keep messing around with that until you get something that you're proud of uh, or until you get bored. <laughs> all right, so that's about it. That's all of the tools that I wanted you to look at here. And then the decal and emboss, I kind of talked about those. Those are pretty simple. Just use a sketch um, with, a, with a image or with some text and then you can wrap to face as well. So it'll kind of do one of these here with the curved surface. Sweep is pretty interesting. You need a profile and a path. It might be a little difficult. This path is a curly path. It's a coil actually. So that's complicated. Uh, this is a really good use of the sweep tool. It takes a constant, uh, it takes a constant cross section and moves it around. Straws are really good too. Constant cross section and just coils it around a certain path. Extrude with taper is the, basically the same extrude tool that we have been using. I'll show you <coughs> in the extrusion and under more, here's the taper angle. You can make a taper if you want to, it's, I'm not requiring that from you. And then the coil tool needs a profile and an axis to coil around. And then you can specify some of these other crazy things like a taper angle and blah, blah, blah. This is really good for springs, especially in the unit six reverse engineering project. When we do pens, you'll definitely want to use a, toil, a coil tool. Okay, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed it and make good coffee cups, bye. Oh.